So with 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 uh, Ida, uh, thesis seventeen, we have a great sobriety test. We I mean, the antagonist is five say, three times uh, <laughs> clearly, and you are in fact sober. Yeah, I'm, I'm drinking tea right now. But, uh, uh, so much um, of caffeine, bro. Um, when you and I were talking about this before, um, I got the um, the timing wrong here, and uh, you um, talked a little bit about uh, uh, sickle cell. The tr- again, the trade-off there that gives you a, a defense mechanism against malaria, but it brings a, a, a cost to you as well. So, again, could you expand on these kind of aspects of sure. the evolutionary process? Right. So, in, in Thesis 17, we're talking about genetic trade-offs, which have very different consequences from the trade-offs and decisions you make during the day. Uh, with the genetic trade-off, evolution can do some pretty wacky things. And the best example of this wackiness is sickle cell anemia in sub-Saharan Africa. The sickle cell uh, variant of the hemoglobin gene, when it's homozygous, is basically fatal. Uh, absent very, very good medical care, you'll be dead in your 20s. Um, yet, this particular gene is very common in equatorial Africa. The reason why it is so common is because when you have uh, a copy of the normal gene and a copy of the sickle cell gene, which we call being a heterozygote in biology, you have a beneficial effect from the sickle cell gene, which is that your red blood cells have shorter uh, life cycles. They are chewed up and discarded primarily in the spleen, faster. That prevents the malarial parasite from completing its life cycle, which it does inside of those cells. So, when you're that type of heterozygote, you get a bit of circulatory impairment from the bad effect of the sickling on your peripheral vasculature. Your capillaries will tend to get jammed. But you have the good effect of increased resistance to malaria. That is literally the textbook example of antagonistic pyotropy. Wow. Now, in the context of aging, what happens is actually much less benign. What happens with aging is, if you have a gene that is going to make you, you know, James Dean, and handsome and attractive and totally appealing to the young ladies so that you can have lots of opportunities to reproduce when you're young, but that same gene makes you a careless and in- inattentive driver... So, on your trip to Paso Robles in Central California, you go off the road and crash your Porsche and die, natural selection might very well say, give me some of that James Dean magic. You can make exactly the same argument about Jimi Hendrix. If there were a gene for becoming Jimi Hendrix, natural selection, leaving aside, you know, adolescent males everywhere, would say, wow... I want the rock star gene so I can be adored by hundreds of thousands of women and I can have sex with some significant subset of them and have many illegitimate offspring and die in my late 20s. Natural selection goes for that probably just as much as adolescent males go for that and that's why they start rock bands. Right. So there's a trade-off again. But this time the trade-off isn't in my decisions. This time the trade-off is inside me. Uh, The trade-off... In this case, in this case, as with sickle cell anemia, the trade-off is not one you control. Right. It's a trade-off determined by your genetics. In West Africa, I lived in Ghana as a boy and had to take those days. Paludrin used to work. You know, it was called the white man's grave. It was a to have this genetic variation was extremely helpful. I I don't think you know you could have lived there without it in the pre-medical yeah, well, era. In, in uh, Jared Diamond's Gun, Germs, and Steel thesis, he points this out, that the uh, diseases that attack humans, in a sense, protected the, the sub-Saharan African populations from the same kind of run-over colonization that the New World experienced yes. when the Europeans arrived and we thoughtfully donated to the indigenous populations all of our horrendous diseases, they didn't have as many to give back to us. So in the balance between the Europeans and the 
First Nations of the Americas, the First Nations lost. In Africa, the situation was precisely reversed. Yes. The Africans had evolved genetic mechanisms like sickle cell genes that protected them to at least some extent from their normal diseases. The Europeans arriving didn't, and they died. 